Ta'ala accept your time, accept your effort, and may Allah Ta'ala bless you and I and us all with the true knowledge and understanding of Quran and Deen. Say Ameen, Ya Rabbal Alameen. <clears throat> Today we will do tafsir of uh, ayah number 153 of Surah Baqarah. Ayah 153 of Surah Baqarah to Ayah 157, 157 of Surah Baqarah, inshallah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة إن الله مع الصابرين الله تعالى says he addresses the believers آمنوا استعينوا أو believers استعينوا seek help استعانا يستعينوا يعني seeking help إياك نع إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين وإياك نستعين نستعين means we seek help yeah we worship you alone and we we seek help from you alone means no one else other than you so نستعين استعان يستعين means to seek help so Allah Taala says استعين is a command O people O believers seek help from Allah Ta'ala with two things as sabr and salah it's the, sal the sabr, the patience and the salah, the prayers yeah these two things are very important and then he says inna Allah ma'as sabirin indeed Allah Ta'ala is with the patience means when you are patient Allah is with you what does that mean? That means Allah's extra help with you. Allah's extra support is with you. Allah's soldiers are with you. Angels are with you. They are supporting you and they are seeing what you're going through. So you don't, shouldn't be hopeless thinking that you're going to be destroyed. No. If Allah is with you, how can you be destroyed? Does it make sense? When Nuh alayhi salatu was was in the boat for many months and there was flood outside, wasn't Allah with him? And if Allah was with him, then we know what was the answer. That he, they landed back to the land and they were the successors. They were the people who were successful. Everything else and everyone else were destroyed. Same with Lut alayhi salatu was salam. Lut alayhi salatu wasalam was going through trouble from his people, from his qawm. He was patient. He was sabr. He was praying. Then what did Allah Ta'ala do? Done? Allah Ta'ala saved him. Yeah? Allah Ta'ala saved him and his family and destroyed everyone else. Same similar story with every single prophet. Yes? Isa alayhi salatu wasalam was patient. Yes, he was praying, he was worshipping Allah Ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala says, بَلْ رَفَعَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ Allah Ta'ala elevated him. From the middle of the enemies, Allah Ta'ala lifted him up. Yeah, Allah Ta'ala saved him. So when Allah is with you, the answer is you're not going to be destroyed. Doesn't matter what happens. Even if the whole world is against you and you are alone. If Allah is with you, you're not going to be destroyed. This is Allah's promise. And that's what he meant by Allah is with you. But the isti'ana, the seeking help, it has to be with sabr and with salah. Many of us, we seek help. We say, Allah help us. Give us money, give us business, give us this, give us that, give us children. And so much more we say. But we are not patient. We just want it overnight. No, everything doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. And Allah also wants to see the how serious are you. Listen, you know, some kids, they come, they could come to the Hibs class and they want to read one day so much and they want to become Hafiz overnight. Next day, they are late in the class. Or they didn't even come to the class. So that's not going to happen. You can't become Hafiz overnight. Yeah, Allah Ta'ala said to his Prophet, لا تحرك به لسانك لتعجل به. Oh my prophet, don't rush. Don't rush. إن علينا إن 
What's the, what's the ayah? لا تحرك به لسانك لتعجل به إن علينا جمعه وقرآنه إن علينا جمعه وقرآنه that we will gather it in your heart means we will slowly slowly reveal it gather it in your heart Quran we will make you read it as well so calm down relax be patient this is so patience needed and what type of patience let me give you an example of patience how long Prophet had to be patient to have the whole Quran? 23 years. 23 years. Allah Ta'ala sent the Quran in 23 years. Some of us, we send our children to Madrasa and we say, Why doesn't my son become Hafiz? Brother, is your son something more expert than Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? More extraordinary than Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If Allah Ta'ala revealed the Qur'an slowly, 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 slowly to his Prophet, why can you not give the Qur'an slowly, slowly, little bit by little bit to your son? Why are you so much in rush? Take it easy. Sabr. And pray at the same time. Ask Allah, Allah please accept me and my family. Allah please accept me and my children. What Ibrahim alayhi salam is to say. Yeah? What Ismail alayhi salam is to say. What prophets is to say. They used to, they used to make dua for their children. They used to say, Rabbi habli min as salihin. They used to say, Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrata a'yun. Wow. They used to make dua. They used to pray. Yeah? Allah Ta'ala says, Zakariya alayhi salam, when he needed a child, he was patient for about 90 years. Allah didn't give him a son. He was patient. 90 years. After 90 years when he saw the miracle of Maryam. Maryam having food in front of her. And that food is coming directly from Allah Ta'ala. And she said. He said. Anna laki hadha, where are these from? And she said. Huwa min indillah. It is from Allah Ta'ala. And that's the time he says, Hunalika da'a Zakariya Rabba. Zakariya alayhi salam stood on his prayer mat. And that's the time when he saw the miracle that Allah does everything. He had the faith anyway. He had the faith. He had the strong iman on Allah. But he just came to the excitement. Allah, you've given Maryam the food from Jannah. You can bless me with the sun. He stood on the mat, cried to Allah. Allah Ta'ala says, هُنَالِكَ دَعَى زَكَرِيَّ رَبَّهِ فَنَادَتْهُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَهُوَ قَائِمٌ يُصَلِّ فِي الْمِحْرَابِ Angels called him and said, Zakaria, your du'as got accepted. Your prayers got accepted. Brothers, patience need time. It's not one night patience and say, Ustaz, trust me, I was patient one whole night. No, that's not going to work. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's not going to work. You have to be patient for years. <coughs> the success doesn't come overnight. Help doesn't come overnight. You have to keep begging Allah Ta'ala. Keep asking Allah Ta'ala. Years and years and years and years. Then you will get the success. If you don't see the success, you will see the success in the Akhirah. Because there are some du'as Allah doesn't give you in this world. Allah gives you in the hereafter. He keeps it for you. He saves it for you. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says when the, when the servant of Allah will see the, the, the dua where he asked and it's been accepted and it's been given, he will say, I wish all my duas were rejected in the dunya and all my duas were accepted for the akhirah. Imagine. So some of the duas are accepted but you will get it in the akhirah. But don't give up. He keep asking. Yes, so two things you need, sabr and salah whenever you seek help. So youngsters, a lot of time we see in the exam time, mainly exam time we need help. Again, I will say sabr and salah. But don't stop your hard work. You have to continue your hard work. Then sabr and salah will work. Yes, you have to continue what's in your ability. Same we see in the time of marriage. The youngsters, they struggle a lot. Again, that's the situation. Sabr and Salah. Wait nicely. Pray Salah. Make dua. Allah to give you the right person. Everyone is not nice. Every, everyone is not nice. Everything that, that glitters is not gold. 
All those things which glitters are not gold. So there are some time you will find some people, they look very shiny to you. They look very nice to you, very pleasing to you. But they might not be in real life two years later, they might not be good. And some people might be a little bit harsh in the beginning, a little bit strict, a little bit shy, a little bit held back. They don't want to talk. But these people might be good for you in the long run, who will understand you, who will understand your feelings, who will respect your feelings. You see, so never rush. Allah is saying, don't rush. Ask help from Allah. Whenever you're confused, ask help from Allah with sabr and salah. Here, sabr, Mufassirun, they explain two types of sabr. One sabr is staying away from committing sins. That's a sabr. Because a lot of friends, they do in a lot of different things, but you can't do it because you are a Muslim. That is sabr. And that sabr is a sabr al maasi you doing patience or you being patient to stay away from the ma'asiyah, from the sins, from the bad things. And the another type of sabr is a sabru ala al ita'ah. So one sabr is ita'ah, the obeying of Allah Ta'ala. What does that mean? That means a lot of us, we do good things, but we don't do it properly. Yeah? If you think back about yourself, you will find a lot of things you do as well. That you don't do it properly. For example, sajda, let's say. Someone coming to the masjid, he's doing sajda. He's rushing so much as if a bird eating the food. You know when bird picks rice? Does he do it very slowly or does he do it very fast? Very fast. Very fast. Prophet Sallallahu said it. He said, there are some people, yang quruna kama yang qurut tuyur. Some people, they come and hit their head on the ground like the beds hit the, hit the head on the ground. Their salah is not accepted. Means he's not patient in his salah. He's not patient in his sajda. He's not patient in his rukur. He's not patient in his jalsa, in his sitting. He's not patient in his qiyam. He's rushing everything. As if he's plane flying. Yeah. After Salah, you see him half an hour, he's standing outside talking to a friend. But while he was in the Salah, he was rushing so much. So here you can see this person doesn't have the Sabr. And if they don't have the Sabr, getting the help from Allah is going to be difficult. Because Allah only gives his help to people who have Sabr and who has Salah. Yeah. Now if he doesn't have Sabr inside his Salah, his Salah is not valid. Salah is not done. Yesterday I was saying, Brother Ali remembers, when yesterday I was saying that scholars have said, if you do not do two sajdas properly, if you do not sit in between the two sajdas properly, then both the sajda will be counted as one sajda. Both the sajda will be counted as one sajda, which means your salah is not done. Incomplete. Batil. Salah is batil. It's done. Nullified. Finished. Broken. <coughs> so as soon as you didn't stand properly after the ruku', yeah, the qiyam after the ruku', you didn't do it properly, you just got up from the ruku' halfway, went back to the sajda, your salah is broken. Finished. Subhanallah. Do you see? And then, Lots of responsibilities when you start the salah from the beginning till end. A lot of responsibilities in it that you have to maintain it properly. A lot of rulings in it. You have to maintain everything properly. Now, if you're not patient on of those things, all of those things, then your salah is not done. Do you know what Prophet ﷺ said to the person? He said, I was saying in the khutbah the other day. He said to the person, Irji' fa salli fa inna kalam tu salli. Irji' fasalli fa inna kalam tu salli. Irji' fasalli fa inna kalam tu salli. Three times man went and prayed. First time man went and prayed, and then on the way coming, he said, Assalamu alayka ya Rasulullah. Prophet ﷺ didn't respond back to the salam. He said, Irji' fasalli fa inna kalam tu salli. Go pray, you haven't prayed yet. Second time he comes and prays again. On the way going, he says, Assalamu alayka ya Rasulullah. Prophet ﷺ says, No, you haven't prayed. Go pray first. Irja fa salli fa inna kalam tu salli two times. Then he prayed the second time. 
comes again, says salam. Prophet said, No, you haven't prayed yet. Irja fa salli fa inna kalam tu salli. Three times, man went and prayed his salah. Prophet said, No, your salah is not valid. Then he said, Ya Rasulullah, you teach me how to pray. Then Prophet said, When you do your ruku, do it with full itmi'nan. Do your sajda full itmi'nan. Do your qiyam, do your sitting, everything properly. Do you see? So now if there is no sabr inside the salah, no sabr in your ita'at, in the worshipping of Allah Ta'ala, in the ibadat of worshipping of ibadat of Allah Ta'ala, then your, your ibadat is not valid. That's why scholars have said the second type of sabr is the most important bit. Because if you don't have the sabr in your fasting, while you're fasting, you get angry. Fasting is ibadah, isn't it? Some people get angry when they're fasting. They swear at their wife. They swear at their children. They swear at their people. And some bosses, they swear at their workers. Yeah, restaurant workers especially. They struggle in Ramadan. Because boss shouts at them a lot. Yeah. Allahumma rahamna ya Rabbi. So, <clears throat> now this person is not patient. He's fasting. But he's not patient. Or, let's see differently. Some of us, we're just constantly going to the kitchen, picking up the lid and checking what's in it. Mom, what are you going to eat? What are we going to eat? What are we going to eat? Again, that's from the children's angle. That's not from the adult's angle. Again, they're not patient. Do you see? So if people are not patient in their ibadat, their ibadah is not accepted. Their ibadah is re rejected, refused by Allah Ta'ala. Because Allah Ta'ala only accepts Allahu tayyib yuhibbu tayyib. Allahu jameelun yuhibbu jamal. Allah is beautiful. He loves the beauty. Do you see? Allah doesn't like incomplete things. Allah doesn't like things in half and quarters. That's why Allah Ta'ala said, Mukhlisina lahuddin. Pure sincerity. So do things with pure sincerity. That's what Allah Ta'ala wants. Then Allah Ta'ala gives you higher rank. So here, the scholars have said, even though sabr is two types, first one is easy. Staying away from sin is easy because you know you're going to get yeah, punishment. Yeah, if you do, if you lie, you know you're going to get punishment. If you steal, you know you're going to get punishment. So because of fear of punishment, you're going to stay away. Or if you fear of embarrassment, if your mom sees you, then it's embarrassing. If your dad sees you doing something wrong, it's embarrassing. So it's easy to stay away. But stealing in the salah, no one's going to catch you. Your dad will say, oh, he prayed. As soon as you say, dad, I prayed upstairs, he doesn't say anything. Okay, he prayed, that's fine. So here is the biggest sabr needed where you do things properly even if, he, if, even if no one's watching you and you know Allah is watching you and you always have the fear of Allah. And this is most important part of sabr in our life we need. Right, <clears throat> second part. Moving on. In Allah ma'as sabirin We said it, Allah Ta'ala with the sabirun. When you are patient in your salawat, in your dhikr, in your adhkar, in your ibadat, in your fasting, in your charity, and in every good work you do, you are patient and you're doing it properly, then Allah Ta'ala will be with you. Otherwise, just saying, oh, I'm patient, and you're not really doing things where you need to show to be patient, then Allah won't be with you. <coughs> yeah, then Allah's help won't be with you. You won't get any help. May Allah Ta'ala give us the true understanding of sabr and may Allah Ta'ala give us the ability to pray our salawat properly. Say, Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Next, Allah Ta'ala says, وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَنْ يُقْتَلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أموات. Do not say those of the people who've been killed in the path of Allah. Sabeel Allah means path of Allah. Amwat, dead. Do not call them dead. What does that mean? Those people have died in the path of Allah or those people got killed or martyred in the path of Allah. Do not call them dead. Means Allah Ta'ala is saying no, they're not dead. What, is, what does that mean then? What, what are they? Allah Ta'ala says, Bal They are alive. They are alive. 
وَلَكِنْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ But you don't realize. You don't feel that. So Allah Ta'ala is here showing our weakness and showing the good side of the people who sacrificed their life in the path of Allah. Our weakness is that, that we don't see things which is behind the wall. Our eyes are not powerful enough to see what's under the ground. Our eyes are not powerful enough to see things inside the grave. Yeah? So that's our weakness. So Allah Ta'ala is saying, wherever your weakness is, stay quiet. Stay quiet, just follow my instruction. I will tell you what is right and what is wrong. So some people, they started questioning and saying to Muslims, Oh Muslims, what are you guys doing? You go to fight, you go to battles, people die. That's a loss on your side. Why do you need to do that? Do not fight, just focus on da'wah. Here Allah Ta'ala answered, no. So Allah Ta'ala is responding back to those questions or those comments and saying, no, they are not dead. They didn't die. They are alive. So they are alive means they weren't losers. They are successful. I kept them alive. So they died for my sake. They gave their life on my path. I will preserve their body inside the graves. Until day of judgment, their bodies will be preserved and protected. An example of that, we've seen it already. Do we know where we've seen it? In the Ashab al-Kahf. In the story of Kahf, we've seen it. Allah Ta'ala said it in a way as if he played the video in front of our eyes. Allah Ta'ala says that the these people, they lived inside the cave. Three hundred and nine years they were alive. Three hundred and nine years they were inside the cave, alive. Allah Ta'ala kept them fresh. SubhanAllah. Then we also see the same thing in the story of Uzair alayhi salam. Allah Ta'ala says, Kam labist? Qala labistu yawman aw ba'adayyam. قَالَ بَلْ لَبِثْتَ مِئَةَ عَامِ مِئَةَ عَامِ Allah Ta'ala says, no, you didn't, you weren't here for one day or half a day. You were here for hundred years. Hundred years Uzair alayhi salatu was salam was in the middle of the desert, but his body was fresh. Yeah, do you see? So it is Allah Ta'ala. If Allah Ta'ala wants to keep certain bodies protected and preserved, Allah can do that. And that's why Allah Ta'ala said, Bal ahya, they are alive. Their bodies are fresh in the grave. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, the bury the martyrs the way they die. Do not wash their blood off. Martyrs, you don't wash them. Did you know that? You don't give them shower. You also don't wrap them in the clothes. You bury them with the clothes what they have. Whatever they're wearing, that's it. Yeah? So they go the way they wear. So they get up the way that they wear. And the, in the day of judgment, they get up the same way. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, the people will get up the way they died. Means whatever condition you died in, you will be getting up doing that same thing. So if you were fixing a light bulb and you died, you will get up and you will do this in the day of judgment. As if you're still fixing the light bulb. You're still continuing the same bit. Listen. So imagine the martyrs, yeah, they're still fighting and they're continuing that job. And in the day of judgment, they will get up as if they're continuing their fighting. Subhanallah. And then in the Muslim hadith of Muslim, it says that Allah Ta'ala takes their souls and puts them in the body of a bird, small bird, a sphur, sparrow, small bird. And Allah Ta'ala lets it fly around the arsh. Arsh of Allah Ta'ala is big, huge. And these souls of these martyrs, these shuhada, they are flying around. Seeing Allah Ta'ala every day. Yeah? Staying around Allah Ta'ala every day. 
And just before the day of judgment, Allah Ta'ala will return their souls back to the body and body and soul will get up together again. Subhanallah. So Allah Ta'ala, did they lose? These people, they gave their life in the path of Allah. Did they lose or did they win? Which one? They won. They won. They were successful. And did Muslim lose? Allah Ta'ala says, no, no Muslim didn't lose either. Because Muslims get motivation by looking at them. And they learn to sacrifice their soul. They learn to sacrifice their wealth. They learn to sacrifice their life for deen. Yeah. And there are still some people who sacrifice their entire life. You know, a few days ago, a brother, young man like these people, messaged me from America, New York, and said, Sheikh, I want to travel to Saudi Arabia or to Egypt to study knowledge of deen. He just became Muslim a few years, few years back. I hope he hears my video or he sees my video one day. Then he will feel it that I actually spoke about it in the public. So you guys make dua for him. Very young man. That time he became Muslim, he was about 18 or turning 19 years old. Young man. His mother is Christian. His sister is Christian. But he's still living with his same mother. He asked me, what shall I do? I said, stay with your mom. As long as your mom doesn't have a problem, you stay with her, look after her. So he said, I want to travel to Saudi Arabia or to Egypt to study and sacrifice my life for deen. I said, brother. And then his, his main question was, shall I complete my degree or shall I go? I said, brother, depends on you. But I will say, if you are close to completion, then complete it. Do not leave you halfway because you studied already three years out of five years, for example. Then complete another two years and get the degree done. Because that chance might not come again. That's also needed. Your worldly preparation to live in this world, that's also needed. Islam never says, do not prepare to live in this world. Yes, you need preparation. You need to do all those whatever needed to do in your bread. So I told him, look, you study if you need to. If you can complete it, complete it. Plus, you got future in front of you and you need to get married as well. And you are single. Means only Muslim in the family. What if mommy doesn't support you in the marriage? So you need money. Plus, if you go abroad, you need lots of money to help yourself over there. So I said, look, finish your degree, work, save, and then in the future, think about it. So what I'm trying to say that even now there are people in this world who are ready to sacrifice their life for deen. May Allah Ta'ala accept them. Amen. And may Allah Ta'ala make us and in our families those people who can sacrifice their life for deen. Say, Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We need people who can travel the world to learn Quran and Sunnah. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal who traveled, who traveled and went everywhere, wherever he heard the one person has a hadith, even if it's one hadith, he traveled. For months and months he traveled just to get to that person and just to hear the hadith with his own ear. Hear the hadith with his own ear. Why? That gives the authentication. SubhanAllah. So these people, they traveled for deen. And that's why Allah Ta'ala kept their name fresh. And Allah Ta'ala kept their name, uh, what you call, elevated, respected. So anyone who will sacrifice their life or his wealth for deen, Allah Ta'ala will keep them elevated and respected forever. May Allah Ta'ala make us amongst them. Allah Ta'ala says, وَلَكِلَّا تَشْعُرُونَ You don't feel it. You won't realize. To you, it might look like it's a loss. But it's not a loss. It's a gain. So young man, be ready to learn your deen and be ready to sacrifice your time and effort and money to understand the deen, understand the books of Allah. Next, وَلَا نَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْسٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah Ta'ala says, O oh people, listen carefully, that I will test you. Every time you believe in me as a God, and every time you call yourself Muslim or Mu'min, I will test you. Because you cannot say I'm a Muslim and without security check i'm going to take you inside no it doesn't work there will be test allah ta'ala says ahasiba nasu an yutraku an yaqulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun 
Do people think that they will say, I believe in Allah and they will be left alone without tests? No. Every person have said, I believe in Allah, they had to go through the test. And that test for some people might be easy, for some people might be hard. And that test it could also mean walking over the fire, burning coal. Yeah, it could mean that. But Allah will test you. And the type of tests Allah Ta'ala mentioned, listen to this. Allah Ta'ala says, Khawf, number one, fear. Allah will create stress, fear, anxiety, worries, sadness, distress. So much more. Allah Ta'ala will create those in you to test you. Who do you turn to? Who do you rely on? What do you do? Do you read Quran when you are stressed? Do you read Quran when you are worried? Do you pray Salah when you are worried? Do you get close to Allah or do you get close to something else? Yeah? Some people say when, I, when I'm stressed, I, I watch a movie. When I stress, I go to drink alcohol. When I'm stressed, I go to do this, do that. What do you do? Allah's testing the believers. Where do you go? Commit sin or do good deeds? Listen, Allah Ta'ala will test you with khawf. Wal-ju'u. Allah Ta'ala will test you with hunger, poverty. Suddenly Allah Ta'ala will send poverty to you. Suddenly. You didn't even expect. You had a big building. Big massive bungalow. Big massive mansion. Big massive house. Yes, lots of businesses. But suddenly you see there is an earthquake. And everything broken and gone under the ground. Happens. Happens lots in Bangladesh. Isn't it? Lots in Pakistan. Lots in different, different countries. Flood comes, takes everything. Isn't it? Yeah, flood takes everything. Fire takes everything. Suddenly you will see there is a fire and whole market got burnt. And in that, the biggest mall was yours. That's gone. So that can be a test from Allah. Allah's testing you. That today you are rich, tomorrow you are a poor person. How do you behave? Yes, if you behave normal and you say, Alhamdulillah, whatever happens, it happens with the will of Allah. Yeah, flood came, took everything. Earthquake came, took everything. Uh, landslide came, took everything. Fire came, took everything. Whatever took everything, doesn't matter. I still am alive and I still got a tongue to say, Alhamdulillah. You see, so Allah Ta'ala wants to see that. Once you be patient and once you thank him, he starts giving you back. You see things start coming from different directions. You don't even realize how it comes, but it starts coming. And you start behaving madness, behaving with madness, behaving with uh, crazy or like a mental person. Then Allah Ta'ala gives increases the problem in you. Problem increases. And you see one after another, one after another, and you keep trying to open the knots, open the knots, and it never finishes. And Allah Ta'ala creates the mess in your life. So, what do we do when poverty comes, sudden poverty? Patient again. Hold yourself. Rely on Allah. Relax. Take a deep breath. Ask Allah to help you. Ista'inu bis sabri wa salah. Again, do sabr. Again, stick to your salah. Stick to your prayers. Allah will bring you back. Then Allah Ta'ala will test you wa naqsim min al-amwal. Reducing your wealth. And that's again, as I just mentioned, it, suddenly your whole business dropped. Suddenly everything gone. From no way. You didn't even imagine that that's going to happen. But that's what happens. Allah Ta'ala took all your wealth. Well, anfus. You're expecting your children will grow up. They will become big men, strong men, and this and that. Suddenly you see your son died. Your daughter died. Out of no way. You didn't expect he didn't have no illness. Suddenly started coughing. And then by the time you took him to hospital, he's gone. Happens. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had three boys. All three of them died in the young age. All three of them died before the age of three. Do you see? Why is that? Allah's testing Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
So if Allah tested his beloved prophet, then who are we? What's our iman level compared to Rasulullah? Yeah, one percent of his iman. I will say it's not even one percent of his iman. Now imagine how strong his iman was, how strong his connection with Allah Taala was, and Allah Taala tested him. So now, if you and I we say we are believers, imagine the test we have to go through. That's why I said you might even need to walk over that burning coal. Yeah, and you have to be ready for it. You have to be ready for a test. Because without test, Allah won't see that are you a real believer or fake believer. And Allah Ta'ala tested the Sahaba over and over. Sahaba got tested. Do you think the Sahaba, they just became Sahaba without getting tested? No. With their own hand, they had to break the fake gods. With their own hands. If you and I were there, Allah knows what we would have done. It's impossible. It's hard. You believe in something for years, for so long. You worship something for so long. And you see your parents worshipping, your grandparents worshipping, your great-grandparents worshipping. They're respecting. And you have to go and swear at it and break it. It's difficult. It's difficult. You're attacking your own tradition. You see, you're attacking your own system. And Sahaba, they had to do that to prove that they are believers. You understand? Sahaba weren't allowed to stand in front of parents' dead body and make dua. Their parents died on the other side. Yeah, parents were on the enemy's side. But they couldn't make a dua, make a prayer. You see, it's hard. It's very hard. You will feel it once you see that your father is dead in front of you, but you are not allowed to make a prayer for him. Then you will say, now I feel what Sahaba went through. That's a test for them. That are they real believers or not? And Quran constantly cursing their parents, Sahaba's parents. Every time Quran cursing the mushrikun, who are these mushrikun? It's the parents of the Sahaba, isn't it? Yeah? Grandparents of the Sahaba, great-grandparents of the Sahaba. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, what was his father? A mushrik. Do you see? So now, every time Quran cursing them, cursing the parents of the Sahaba, and they themselves reading these verses. Now imagine how much test they going through. Every day they're swearing at their parents. Every day they're cursing their parents. It's painful. But Sahaba had to go through that test to make themselves Sahaba. You understand? <coughs> So to make yourself something good and something solid, you have to go through tests, my friends. And Allah will test you. Allah says, Allah will test by anfus, means by taking your loved ones away from you. And that could be physically, permanently Allah taking them away or temporarily taking them away. Sometimes your friends can be your enemies. They just turn against you out of nowhere. And that can be a temporary one, a few years back. Few years after they come back again, they fix everything. Or someone permanently gone, like Prophet Sallallahu buried his three sons with his own hand, buried his three daughters with his own hand. You see, out of his all his seven children, only child was alive in the time of his death is Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha. All other children died before his death. So he buried six children with his own hand. Imagine the test the father will go through, bearing your children with your own hands. So test will come. This is what anfus means. What thamarat? Allah will test you in your profits, in your businesses, in your work, in your farming. You're expecting you're going to win or you're going to make lots of money this year in your farm. It produces lots of crops, lots of grains, lots of fruits, vegetables. And you're expecting and looking at it and thinking, wow, I'll get it. But overnight, there might be a fire. Wildfire, burnt everything. Happens. Happens. Overnight, the, the little bugs come and they eat it, everything, and they destroy everything. Happens. It happens in Bangladesh as well. Overnight, flood comes. People expecting they're going to cut lots of grain, lots of rice. Overnight, flood comes, takes everything, destroys everything. That's it. This is the test Allah will test you. But the good news for that, Sabirul. Good news for the patience. So brothers, learn to be patient in life. 
learn to be patient in life. Do not always compare yourself with the most rich person in, in the world. Do not compare yourself with the most strongest person in the world. Do not compare yourself with the most beautiful, handsome person in the world. No, you don't have to do that. Be patient. Be happy with what you have. Be happy with what you have and be thankful to Allah Ta'ala. And that's what Allah Ta'ala said in Ayah 152. That remember me, I'll remember you. Be thankful, I'll be thankful to you. Don't be ungrateful to me. So be thankful to Allah Ta'ala. With everything you have, be thankful to Allah Ta'ala. Yes, if you have a house, think about those people who don't have a house. If you have a pair of shoes, think about those people who don't have a pair of shoes. Wallahi, you will see, if you go to third world country, you will see thousands and thousands of people, they're walking whole day on the street without sandal. Without a sandal on their foot. You will see. So you have, you have shoes, say Alhamdulillah. You have bed, say Alhamdulillah. You're having food, say Alhamdulillah. There are people, thousands and thousands of people in Yemen, they are sleeping every night without food. They're sleeping with hunger. There are people sleeping in Syria without a shelter on top of them. Snowing on top of them. And some of them turning into ice in the morning. Mothers carrying the ice, dead body. Child died. It's snowing. This is the situation of the world. So think what's around you. Do not forget the ni'mah and blessings of Allah Ta'ala. Be thankful and be happy with what you have. That's what Allah Ta'ala is trying to teach you. And if you be happy and content, then no test will take you to the wrong path. Every time test comes, it will make you more strong and strong and it will make you a firm believer. And that's why your motive should be. The you to be a good believer and a firm believer. And then Allah Ta'ala says the last verse for today. Sorry, second to last verse for today. الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَتٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ But amongst the slaves of Allah Ta'ala, there are some who, whenever the trouble comes, whenever the musibah comes to them, they say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Here, there are two types of people who say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. One type of people who don't even know the meaning of Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. They just say it. They just say it. They don't even feel it that they're actually saying something and it means something. Do you know what Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun means? It means sympathy. It means preparation. It means a waking call. It's a lot of meanings behind this. Whenever you said, we are all from Allah, we all go back to Allah. It's a waking call. It's waking you up. This is, it's a preparation call. So you prepare yourself to be next. You understand? When he said, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon, you saying, oh, that musibah, what came to my friend, that can come to me. So I need to be ready. That's what you just said. But we don't understand it. We don't mean it what we say. We just say, we hear someone died. Oh, inna lillahi, inna lillahi. We think sometimes it's a dua. But it's not dua, it's a reminder. It's not a dua. Is it dua, Shaykh? No, dua is Allahumma gfir lahu wa Allah forgive him. Allahumma rahamhu wa Allah have mercy on him. That's a dua. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun is not a dua. It's a reminder to yourself, myself, ourselves, that we are next. And test will come to me next. Do you see? So Allah Ta'ala says, there are some people to whom the trouble comes, musibah comes, musibah means troubles, difficulty. Difficulty comes and they say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. They really say it from their heart that we are all from Allah and we all return back to Allah. And they say that and they remain ready. So if my test comes to them, they are strong and firm and patient. Do you see? That's what inna lillah means. So you are ready, mentally ready, physically ready. You know, someone was saying the other day that a day will come in this country, the electricity will stop. And they are planning, they're going to stop slowly, slowly, they're going to take for 10 minutes. And then one day they're going to take for half an hour. Then long time later, they're going to take for one hour. And then long time later for a day. And then eventually it's going to be weak, the electricity, no, no electricity like Bangladesh and other countries. Someone asked me, what are we going to do? Or what are you going to do? I said... There is a system in Bangladesh, they put kerosene in the pot and put a string in it and then it burns. 
So we are used to it. We'll do that. We'll get candles. We'll get it. We'll live life. Nothing to stress. Electricity is not, is not the last thing in my life that, that it's going to go, then I'm going to die. No. I have a roof on top of me. This is a lot. A lot of people don't have a roof on top of me. Roof, roof on top of them. Yeah, I got clothes to wear. There's a lot. A lot of people don't have clothes to wear. Forget worrying about electricity. You understand? Some people go mad if they don't find AC. They think, how am I going to survive without AC? Brother, you will survive. You will survive. All you need to make your mind ready. Yeah? Aren't people surviving in this world, in those countries where people don't have AC? Aren't people surviving in those places where there is snowing throughout the year and there is no heating? People will survive. And you will only die when the death is written. So rely on Allah and read Inna Lillahi wa Inna Ilayhi Raji'un with the true meaning and understanding. Allah Ta'ala says those people, basically from the beginning, those who be thankful to Allah Ta'ala, always remember Allah Ta'ala, always seeking help with sabr and salah, and then always believe that if they die in the path of Allah, they are still alive, and they always remain ready for the test because they know Allah Ta'ala will test them, and when Allah tests them, they remain patient, and then they, whenever musibat comes on them, they always say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. All these people, Allah Ta'ala says, Ula'ika ala hudam min rabbihim. They are the people, they are in the guidance of Allah Ta'ala. They are in the hidayah of Allah Ta'ala. Wa ula'ika humul, wa ula'ika alayhim salawatun min rabbihim. So these are the people, the salawat of Allah Ta'ala, the mercy of Allah Ta'ala, and the prayers from Allah Ta'ala come on them. Salawat means mercy. Forgiveness. So Allah Ta'ala sends forgiveness. Allah Ta'ala sends rahmah on them. Allah Ta'ala sends his good things on them. Those people, whatever we discussed, all of these people, whoever follows the Quran, according to what Allah Ta'ala said, Allah Ta'ala sends his mercy, kindness, forgiveness, and the good things on them. وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ And they are the guided people. They are the people on the right path. May Allah Ta'ala make us amongst them. May Allah Ta'ala make us patient, make us strong, and may Allah Ta'ala keep us ready always to face the test so we can win the test and we can get the higher rank in the eye of Allah Ta'ala. Subhanallah, bihamdihi, subhanallah, al-azim, subhanak, Allahumma, bihamdik, nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. We'll stop here, inshallah. Is there any question from anyone? Brothers. Yes, Adam. Like a su'al? La? Huh? Brother Ali? Yes. Mujahid? Yes. Majharul? No? Okay, wait a second. Zakaria? Wait a second. Yes, go on, Ali. Wait. No, 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 no. You can't use the other zikr. No. This is something, is a reminder. You always read it to remind you. So whenever a trouble comes, whenever it's something unusual you see, you can read it. Yeah? So whenever something unusual, for example, you just suddenly you got, you got hurt. Yeah? You just squashed your finger. Say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. So it's a reminder. We are all from Allah. We all go back to Allah. So whatever happened is with the will of Allah. This is, so that's the, remind, the reminder is the main bit. So you're getting the message from this sentence. So every time something unusual, something difficult, you read this sentence. But it's not dua. Dua is... You say, Allahumma li, Allah have mercy on me, Allah have forgiveness on me, Allah look after me. These are the du'as. So dhikr wise, you have to say, La ilaha illallah, that's a dhikr. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. These are dhikr. Jazakallah yeah. khairan. But generally it is a dhikr because it's part of the Qur'an and whole Qur'an is a dhikr. So in that sense it is dhikr. But is it, is it something that I can re re read like how I would read La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. Can I read Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun constantly? No. That we don't find any evidence from the Sahaba or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yeah? Yes, brother. If, if a non-Muslim died, can I say Inna lillahi Of course. Of course. Because you're not making any prayer for him. That's a reminder to yourself. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. We are all from God and we all go back to God. That's it. You see, that's not a prayer. Yeah? So that's fine. But saying to someone that may Allah guide you or may Allah show you the path to Jannah, these sort of prayers are not 
bad. Because if Allah shows the path to Jannah to him, he has to become a Muslim. So in a way, you're asking Allah to make him Muslim. So that dua is fine, you see. But saying something like that, may Allah forgive your mom. No, 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 that's not going to happen. Allah won't forgive his mom because Allah said Allah won't forgive the mushrikun. You see, so that's something we can't do. So we have to understand our barriers, our boundaries. So within our boundaries, we can make dua. Those ones are alive, we can make dua for them. We can say, may Allah guide you all. May Allah show you the true path. This is, or may Allah guide us all to his right path. This sort of du'as are fine. Because you're asking for hidayah. Yes, Brother Ali. You know, the Muslim neighbors, or when you go to a shop, someone does something nice for you, or you try to say, God bless you, is that permissible? Is it permissible? Because I find myself saying that quite a lot. <clears throat> we um, say that, but will Allah bless them? No, Allah won't bless them. Because anyone disobeying Allah, Allah won't bless them. Anyone disrespecting Allah or associating partners with Allah, Allah won't bless them. So best not to make that prayer. Best to say, may Allah guide you. Yeah? Or this sentence, but probably with different wordings or different ways. So people don't get offended as well. Do you see with finding a different way to say it, yeah, go on. Because when I say it, my intention is, I'm um, saying like... Well, bless you with the, with the guidance. Guide. If it's that intention, then but fine. They, they don't understand it when you say that. Like, but not when you say, God bless you. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Intention. If his intention is that, then Allah Ta'ala, innama al-a'malu bin niyat. Allah Ta'ala sees what's your intention, isn't it? Okay, so we'll stop here, inshallah. Any other questions for you? you. Any other questions, uh, Sheikh? Sure. Sheikh Yusuf. Thank you for joining us. Beautiful, mashallah. Young man, any question? Sasa? Sheikh? Uh, you know, some people say rest in peace. Uh, R.I.P. R.I.P. Yeah. <laughs> R.I.P. Rest in peace. No, we can't say that. Can we? No. Prophet wasn't allowed. Allah Ta'ala said, لا تصلي على أحد منهم مات أبدا ولا تقم على قبري. Allah Ta'ala said, do not even stand on top of their graves thinking that they will be blessed because of you are blessed. Do not even make prayers for them. So that means Prophet ﷺ wasn't allowed to make any prayers for the people who have passed away. No, that's not. Yeah. So people who are alive, Prophet ﷺ made dua for them. Those who are alive, Prophet ﷺ made dua for them. Prophet ﷺ made in, in, in one night he was making dua for Abu Jahl and Umar. He said, Allah, guide one of these two. Allah guide Abu Jahl or Umar, one of these two. And then next morning, who gets guidance? Allah. Umar gets the guidance. So Allah Ta'ala <coughs> accepted the dua. But accepted the dua for the person who is suitable to be a Muslim. And that one is not suitable, or who's got lots of uh, bad feeling towards Islam, Allah Ta'ala didn't guide him. So that one who's got, like, he's got misunderstanding, but he's looking for the truth. So Allah Ta'ala showed him the truth. So Umar radiallahu ta'ala became Muslim. So if it's something like that, you can make dua. But other than that, those people passed away, we don't make dua. Okay, we are not allowed to do that. Okay? Unless we know for sure this person was a believer, believer in Allah and Muhammad Rasulullah, or believer of the previous ummah, we make dua for them. Okay? Believers of the previous ummah, Quran makes dua for them. Allah, Allah ta'ala says, رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَا بِالْإِيمَانِ وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا رَبَّنَا رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَاللَّهُ فَقِيرٌ يَا رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ and our brothers those who passed away before us سَبَقُونَا they gone before us بالإيمان they went with إيمان so whenever you say that, that includes Musa alayhi salam's ummah, Isa alayhi salam's ummah, Adam alayhi salam's ummah, Yusuf alayhi salam's ummah, Yaqub alayhi salam's Zakariya alayhi salam's ummah, everyone included in that dua. Do you see? So that sort of dua is fine. That those who died with Iman, Allah forgive them. Amen. Grant them Jannatul Firdaus, grant them higher rank, that sort of dua fine. But those who didn't die with Iman, no, don't make dua for them because you don't want to take that risk of their mistake. Okay, Jazakumullah khairan. Take care, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.